welcome to Branch of Israel. This is Rabbi Roger coming to you from God's beautiful country, Israel. I remember when I was in the military, I always heard the term, you do not have a need to know. This was mainly because of my security clearance level. As time went on, I even heard that term used in corporate America. The big question to ask is this, does God care enough about us to let us know what is going on, or do we not have a need to know? The best way I can answer that is sometimes yes, and sometimes no. For example, God tells us in Jeremiah that he has grand plans for us, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give us a future and a hope. There it is, plain and simple, he just told us. He knows about the grand plans for our future and well-being, but there's something we are not privy to, how to get to that point. I do not know about you, but as for myself, if he had told me how to get there, I would be in the flesh working on it before God had a chance to stop me. You also know that you'd be doing the same thing, so stop snickering. Now, I was actually trying to head somewhere with all of this. In the Bible, sometimes God shares with us as to why he does something, and other times he does not. There are four passages that I would like to share just to give you an idea, and I know there are more, but because of time, I can only share these few. By the way, if you know of any, please feel free to write in and tell me your suggestions. I call these the whys of God. The first question, why did God choose Abraham? In Genesis 18, 19, it reads, For I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. In other words, not everyone back then had the personality it took to do what was about to be expected of them considering Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. The next one, why did God lead the Israelites the long way to Canaan? This answer is found in Exodus 13, 17. Now, when Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near. For God said the people might change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. This question lends itself to ask, why did God keep hardening Pharaoh's heart? Genesis 14, 4 reads, Thus I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after them, and I will be honored through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. The last one for today, why was David not allowed to build the temple but Solomon was? The answer to this question is found in a few places throughout Scripture, but the main one I want to point out is in 1 Chronicles 22, 7 and 8. David said to Solomon, My son, I had intended to build a house to the name of the Lord my God, but the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name, because you have shed so much blood on the earth before me. In the verses that follow, God named Solomon as the person for the job. For more teachings and information, visit branchofisrael.com. That's branchofisrael.com. Again, this is Rabbi Roger coming to you from Israel. Thank you so much for listening. The heat the road. Goodbye or see you again.